Hello and welcome to Dream Seed VR. I'm your host Sarah Finn coming to you today as Maxine Headspace to talk about my favorite cyberpunk show from the 1980s, Max Headroom. How did a groundbreaking show with a cyberpunk genre make it onto the air in the 1980s on British television? Max Headroom originally aired on Channel 4 in 1985. The brainchild of Rocky Morton he describes it as the most boring thing ever. A middle class white, white guy, a talking head in a suit, talking to them in a really boring way about music videos. So initially the name was the first aspect that was created regarding Max Headroom. His creator initially said that it would be great free publicity as Max Headroom was the phrase listed above all of the parking garage entrances and exits in the UK at the time. And it also gave itself uh, a quality of expansive creativity and consciousness, like the sky is the limit, Max had room, infinite possibilities. And so the plot was actually written around this initial prompt. And it's really incredible to think that such a well-developed set of characters and, and plot incidents came out of such a limited creative prompt. Massive applause to the producers and writers of Max Headroom managing to create such a, a in-depth plot for their pilot as a way of creating the backstory for this virtual DJ character. So a lot of the aesthetic in Max Headroom comes from cyberpunk inspiration. It's been said that in the production there was the, the word Blade Runner was continuously thrown around in the production almost to the point of ad nauseum that sort of gritty dystopian future vibe was present throughout the entire show. And in contrast to that, there was a lot of really amazing wry wit and humor. Um, in Blade Runner, you'll find that it's a very dry, morose, dystopian, sullen kind of vibe. But what's so charming about Max Headroom is that its main star, Matt Frewer, is an incredibly talented, uh, improv comedian and just very well fleshed out actor. He's appeared in a number of other movies and shows that you might be familiar with. He was in Altered Carbon recently, another cool science fiction and a sort of cyberpunk genre, as well as the classic film The Stand. He played the trash can man. So Matt Frewer is uh, an incredible Canadian born actor and he was living in London at the time and they ended up picking him because he had just such chiseled good looks and he had great improv. So he seemed a perfect fit for the acting and he brings a sense of um, humor with Max as well as really just like tight knit gritty commentary as the counterpart to Max Headroom, the journalist named Edison Carter. Now Edison Carter works for a channel called Network 23. He is a live streaming investigative journalist. He works live on the fly and it's broadcast back to Network 23. And he's constantly investigating things that end up being revealed to be corruption that's actually directly related to the network that he works for, which has a sense of irony considering that there are so many um, analogies or like mirroring to what's going on in modern media and corruption as well as the social engineering behind it. Uh, my, uh, my favorite favorite episode is one in particular called Blipverts and a Blipvert is a subliminally coded kind of commercial. It has a lot of data built into a really short period of time. So even though you're exposed to a commercial that's maybe only a second of seconds long, you are being essentially downloaded with a lot more information than just that. So much so that your brain just like explodes and you come, you spontaneously combust. It was just super crazy way out there. I love the wacky theories and um, just like cool concepts that they bring to the show. Another favorite episode of mine is the zigzag commercial episode in which they describe a kind of virtual reality bracelet that is a promotional item that comes along with 
purchasing, uh, if I remember right, little hamburgers. You like go to your hamburger fast food joint and you get one of these little slap bracelet things and it transports you into a virtual simulated experience that causes euphoria, is very much fantasy and wish fulfillment. And people get highly addicted, including Edison Carter himself gets addicted to these zigzags. And uh, it's just really witty, very much ahead of its time, filled with camp as well as really cool visual art design. And I just feel like every episode is just super badass and engaging. Um, unfortunately, because at the time it was ahead of its time and viewership was, um, they were competing with some other really heavy hitting shows at the time. Max Headroom didn't last as long as uh, the production hoped it would. It was very near and dear to their hearts. I watched a cool documentary on it just recently. They were saying that people cried. They mourned the loss of their like super dope show. Um, but Max managed to be so successful that even Coca-Cola came to him and said, hey, will you help revive one of our products that isn't doing so good? I believe it was like Coke One or something, some nasty like one calorie kind of Coke. But yeah, he did a great job and he later became a VJ for MTV. And uh, so he not only fulfilled his initial creative impetus, you know, like, oh, be a VJ for us, but he also managed to create one of the most witty and badass uh, science fiction cyberpunk shows on mainstream television in the 80s and he also just became a cultural icon and there was even a funny incident uh, a number of years later in Chicago where a hacker took over a local news station and uh, wore a silly Max Headroom mask and proceeded to have some off-camera mistress spank him on the ass with a fly swatter. You'll just have to, you'll just have, you'll just have to make do with me spanking my own ass with a fly swatter. So there are way too many fun tidbits I could go into regarding Max Headroom, but I just encourage you to go check it out yourself. Um, be forewarned that this is a production that was made in the 80s, so it's not going to be the best resolution. You're going to have to use your suspension of disbelief to sort of see past the grainy quality of the film itself. But other than that, it is amazing. The acting is great. The writing is great. The production art is great. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. It's totally a gem, a blast from the past. And uh, coming at you from 20 minutes into the future, I'm Maxine Headspace. This is Dream Seed VR. Did I say that right? I don't think I said that right. Bloopers. Come, come, coming at you 20 minutes into the future. This is Sarah Finn as Maxine Headspace for Dream Seed VR. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends, and join me in the future for additional content covering our favorite cyberpunk and psychedelic media. Max Headroom is so iconic that even the rap god himself, Eminem, cosplayed him for his music video, Rap, rap God. Playboy even did a Max Headroom parody and had a gorgeous model play the part of Maxine Legroom. <laughs> That's right. There's another fabulous gender bend of Max Headroom. Max was so hot that he transcended his uh, all-American male virileness and makes a really stunning woman in that Playboy. Do yourself a favor and check it out. Uh, she's hot as all hell. She's got cool cyberpunk attire. And uh, yeah, enjoy Maxine Legroom. Like a posture. Yeah. I think that's it. I think that's just it. Is that it? There's nobody there. It's just me. I do all of it. But yeah, that's, that's good, right?